once again, how you doing? You know, how y'all doing? Keeping with consistency. Make a video every day, at least one video a day. Today I'm going to talk about the United States is not our nation. The United States of America is not black people's nation. You see, everybody in America not America because America is North and South America. There are two continents that include Central America, the islands. So all of that is America, right? But all of the U.S. citizens, except black people, chose to be U.S. citizens. They came here voluntarily. They did the immigration or they illegally got in here, married somebody. Or they were stu stu excuse me, students and they overstayed their welcome so they had to marry a U.S. citizen. Somehow they got their green card. Somehow they became citizens voluntarily. But uh, black people, we were prisoners of war. And I can tell you we're prisoners of war because the Native American reservations are still classified as prisoner of war camps. You know, but we were actually the slaves of this government to build the infrastructure to... Uh, work for the industry, similar to how America goes to foreign countries and exploit the cheap labor, the slave labor in order to make profits. That was our position as the prisoners of war, the slaves. When we actually had freedom, we was emancipated, meaning we was uh, allowed to be freed on our own volition, still as minors, because you can emancipate a minor and they have rights, but they're still a minor. So that's what they call us primarily and our uh, Partially, they consider us minorities because they, they consider us not capable of handling our own affairs, whatever. But we were handling our own affairs during Reconstruction, the Freedmen's Bureau. And we was doing it so well. We was ascending so fast that the United States government sacrificed their own ego to make us citizens, something they didn't want to do. It's the only way to slow them down and to stop them from overtaking us eventually we have to subjugate them with using policies and laws but since we was a separate government doing a freedmen's bureau we was a, a stateless we was in a we was in a, a transitional stage to developing an independent nation but that was sacrifice and stopped and that leverage they had i read this book called the uh soul of black folks by the boys he actually extensively documents the uh, freedmen's bureau he said our central bank was robbed of all of its money like millions of dollars that the black people had in this bank for the freedmen's bureau when that bank was robbed and this was before the fdic none of that was secured none of that was insured none of the money was insured now that weakened the freedmen's bureau so that was put us in a more desperate position a weaker position when it came to negotiating. You make you citizens, 14th Amendment, yet we're gonna have segregation. <laughs> we're gonna give you sharecropping. We're gonna make you, you know, we're gonna actually make you slaves again, but you still got the citizenship though. And you're subjected to our laws and you can't be a sovereign nation now. But we was forced into citizenship, you know? And we are a people. And according to the international law, all people have a right to a flag and a right to a nation. And they have a right to not be exterminated. They have a right to reproduce. Now, we are a people who've been, we haven't been, we really wasn't adopted by the United States. We were kidnapped, held in captivity. Secondly, this is a second captivity when they passed that 14th Amendment, claiming us as theirs because we was born here. But we must actually find our original nation, which we will never get from America. It will never tell us who we really are. Or we could just declare ourselves a people, regardless of our history. We declare ourselves a people, and that will give us all the rights to self-governance but as long as we hold on to this United States, we will never be able to declare ourselves as a people, a separate people. Because we're in a we're in a strange position because we're declared Africans and American, right? But we're not really 
given a specific country in Africa is just vague. We literally have three continents because American in our nationality that they gave us, Jesse Jackson, it includes North, South, and Central America. All that is American, right? And we have Africa, the whole entire continent with all the states and the islands surrounding states, surrounding islands, whatever. Now that's three continents with hundreds of countries and we don't even know which one. That's, that's ours. It's just scattered. But we do know we have a, a unique and collective history dating back to the Civil War when we was given uh, emancipation. Like all the so-called blacks in America wasn't really slaves. They was already citizens. Like some of the natives was allowed to be citizens. Some of the so-called blacks who was fighting in the uh, American Revolution, they was not enslaved. Like the whole history of the blacks that was from that was from Pennsylvania, from New York, that history goes back into the 1500s. You know, but their history is just basically collect, co compressed into all of our history. So they probably don't even know where they came from. You know, if they natives, some of them, a lot of people from the East Coast, a lot of black people from Virginia, Georgia, New York, actually know that they're natives. But the uh, the black people from the Midwest, from uh, Texas to Wisconsin and Michigan, our history has been totally stripped. We don't know where we are from, really. We got ideas, the Mississippians, they was the original people. They uh, were the uh, Aztecs from uh, 800 AD up until 1500 AD. They built the Mississippi River uh, cities that goes from uh, New Orleans to Canada. You can take the Mississippi River all the way to New York through Chicago. But we don't really have a, uh, we, didn't, we never really got to the table and determine who we really are. But we do know we are somebody. Like Jesse said, we, I am somebody. We do know we are a people. And that's the only thing that matters. History, we can figure that out later. Because history really is all subjective. Nobody really knows what happened in history. It's all based on whoever's opinion is going on. Whoever has the dominant opinion, whoever is in power. But I will say this though, I keep mentioning the same book, The Prince by Machiavelli, it's very important because this book was a scam of a, a conspiracy against the French Empire during the 1500s. And during the 1500s, uh, Middle America in the United States was actually part of France. And it went from uh, New Orleans to Quebec, Canada, I think. Montreal, it went all the way to Canada. It was called New France, right? All of this region was... And uh, Illinois was called Upper Louisiana. All of this was called Louisiana in the 1500s. It was actually part of France when Machiavelli wrote the book, The Prince. Now, he was saying the only way to conquer France was to uh, kill off the entire uh, royal family. And then to kill off all the nobles loyal to the royal family. And then you have to erase the history totally erase the entire history and once you do that then you must rule in their presence and they will assume you ruled them forever they won't even, they won't even know their own history and people will think this is a uh, talking about the france that was in europe but the france that was in europe they did their revolution 200 years later 300 years later with the french revolution but the real uh destruction because the uh so-called new france that was conquered in the 1700s too. By the Spanish, then the French took it back. But the, but the so-called islands, some of the islands like Haiti, New Orleans, that was not an island. But all the way up to, to Chicago, Chicago, the whole middle, the whole middle America of the United States was actually part of France, and it wasn't necessarily conquered by France. It was an alliance between the Algonquin Native Americans and a French monarchy. They had actually had a, a dual government that they both ruled. 
Now you will say, why would they do this? Why would France and uh, the Algonquins, friends, why was they working together like this? Like you got all these people that's mixed up in, a, uh, in New Orleans in the South that's, that has French, like a lot of blacks is mixed with French. They say this was uh, captivity, but it wasn't captivity. It really, it really wasn't. It was actually a dual government, and they have a a, a common ancestor. The Americans and the uh, the uh, Western Europeans have a common ancestor, which is Carthage. The Carthaginians at one point ruled uh, Western Europe before it was conquered by the Romans. And also the Carthaginians, because I have evidence of artifacts that was discovered in America, also Proto-Hebrew or, you know, the Phoenician language, the script is all around America, like literally, it's, a, it's, it's in the architecture, the Carthaginian architecture with the arches, the bricks, the mortar, it's all throughout the United States, the, the infrastructure, the running water, the aqueducts, the sewer system, that was all part of ancient Carthage. And that's also part of America. But the history, I read it. You know, I ain't going to talk about this book. I'm going to put it in the description when I get the actual name of it. But the uh, allegedly, America was the home of the Carthaginians. That they came from America. And they actually set up colonies all over the world. In Africa, in Asia, I think in South America, in Australia. In China, they had like a world government, you know, because they had the uh, ship technology. They was they was the masters of the shipbuilding technology. And I read a ridiculous book called Hannibal, right? And they talk about what led up into the war between the Carthaginians and uh, the Romans. And they start the book off with how how the Romans developed uh, shipbuilding technology, right? I, I'm a, I don't have a book with me, but you know you can find it. They say. The Romans, this is how they got shipbuilding technology. They allegedly found uh, an abandoned Carthaginian ship on the shores of Italy. And they took this ship and reverse engineered it, right? And rebuilt this ship. And they made it better. And they put clamps and hooks on it. So when they actually are fighting at the sea, your ship will clamp to that ship. And they allegedly built 300 ships and took it to Africa to go to war with the Carthaginians, right? And this all happened in one year. Now, for one, where did they get the wood? You know, the wood that they used to build the ships came from uh, Tyre. How did, how did Italy get get the, the wood from Tyre? How did they cure the wood? Like, how did they cut the wood? How did they know about the hydraulic engineering? Like, like it would have took years of uh, research and development to just be able to make a, a basic ship out of nothing but you allegedly found the Carthaginian ship and made and made it better than them in one year and then took them to war and Carthage wasn't really necessarily in Morocco they say they went they crossed the Mediterranean Sea from Italy to Morocco Carthage was actually in Spain they didn't have to go to Morocco to fight the Carthaginian all they had to do was just cross over to the cross the Alps and go to Spain and France and Britain that was all Carthage what I'm saying is the, uh, the purpose of this video is to let people know that the black people in America did not volunteer to become U.S. citizens. This was forced upon us. We are we was captured. Secondly, it was this is a second captivity. You know, they made us citizens by default by saying we are 14th Amendment, you know, citizens because we was born here and we see what they're doing to Trump. They literally crucifying this guy on live TV. Took them off YouTube, took them off Facebook, took them off all the. You can't even communicate. Like literally, total radio radio silence. They call this, you know, and we won't even know what's going on. This is this is crazy. <laughs> you don't know what's going on with this government, and he, he all he tried to do was help the people build the wall to prevent illegal aliens from coming here and taking jobs and taking resources and exploiting the country. The man tried to help the black people. Like with the opportunity zones, uh, allowing us to get access to loans and money, resources, uh, capital, ownership. Just tried to help a lot of people, and he is getting punished for it. You know, no other politician other than Lincoln and Kennedy 
did anything to try to help the black people. You know, welfare was, was originally started to help the Caucasians during the Great Depression. And it was given to blacks in the 70s when uh, but they required the black women to get the man out the house to divide the family in order to get welfare. And that has been a total dis destruct destruction in part of low-income housing. We can't just live in low-income housing. We need the best housing. You know, we need the best the best resources, the best money. We need money with our own pictures on it. We need money and with Hannibal, with Hannibal on it. Like in Russia, they got money with Euler on it. Because Euler was the uh, one of the patriarchs of modern mathematics. He was a Moor also, but Russia don't care. They don't care about, like, skin. You see what I'm saying? They got black people on their money. Because they realize that the, the skin is just a, a secondary, ter tertiary trait. It, is, it really doesn't really mean that you're not capable of a, a contributing to the world. Like in America, it's a stigma about being black. It's assumed that your black skin uh, disqualifies you from being capable of contributing anything of value to the world because of your dark skin. And people uh, embrace this ideology and disregard people that's dark skinned black people that contribute great things like the woman who developed the coronavirus vaccine she's not even getting uh credit from the mainstream media you know because she's black and she's a black american they don't want to give her no glory give her no uh prestige because that'll go against the whole ideology of america meaning the skin is the value and those with the skin brings the value. And those with the undesirable skin brings nothing. See, that contradicts everything America stands for. A black woman from North Carolina, to really the South, a Republican red state, provide us something that the whole world can be saved from. The savior of the world. And right now, literally modern day Jesus. And they, she's getting no glory, no credit, really. And the black people don't even, they so gutless. The blacks just go along with whatever the mainstream media say because they gutless cowards. They don't really have any type of critical thinking capabilities. They don't really stand for morality, justice, none of that. They just go along to get along. Keep blowing with the wind. You know, that's about it.